Hello guys, welcome to another video on high yield topics. I'm really glad that you've shown so much of love and enthusiasm towards these high yield topic videos. So thank you for that. Uh, today we're going to talk about the high yield topics in rheumatology. Rheumatology is one of the easier subjects to score in your MRCP theory exam. I'll tell you why. So reason number one is because rheumatology is a very specialized subject for an MRCP level exam, the RCP will test you only on the basis of a fixed number of concepts. If you can master those specific concepts, you will be able to answer all the questions from rheumatology correctly. Reason number two is the difficulty level of the questions. In the MRCP exam, not all questions bear the same weightage of marks. If you are able to correctly answer a higher difficulty level question, you will get more marks than solving a lower difficulty question. Now, because rheumatology is such a specialized subject, concepts from this subject may appear to be very difficult to grasp by MRCP candidates. But if you master the concepts of rheumatology correctly and are able to answer the questions in a right manner, you stand a chance to score higher marks than solving a lower difficulty level question, let's say from diabetes or infectious disease. So in this video, we're going to talk about the high yield topics from rheumatology that you need to master in order to score maximum marks in this topic. So let's get started. To begin with, the first topic is arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most important topic and you have to read everything. Each word from a standard textbook or standard MRCP notes. As the exam is getting tougher and tougher, expect questions on Kaplan syndrome, specific manifestation of the respiratory system, cardiology, neurology, that is the extra articular manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis. Also Felty syndrome. RCP loves to ask questions on Felty syndrome, so please don't forget. Now sometimes the RCP asks about specific patterns so as to test the candidate's knowledge on long-standing rheumatoid arthritis. If you can recognize these patterns quickly, you will be able to solve these questions correctly in a shorter span of time. Thus, you can save time on these questions and invest more time in more difficult questions. So if you see a patient with long-standing rheumatoid now developing heptomegaly and a nephrotic range proteinuria, probably the question is asking about amyloidosis. Similarly, splenomegaly with bone marrow suppression is felty and a mononeuritis will point towards vasculitis. Psoriatic arthritis is again a very favorite topic for image-based questions. Also, psoriasis per se is a high yield topic for dermatology. Next is crystal arthropathy. Now this is a topic that often intimidates candidates. When I was preparing a gout and pseudogout, I always used to confuse between the two, the symptoms, the crystals. So prepare this topic well. Also expect questions on the nitty gritties of management of gout, especially with underlying renal impairment. Study this slide very, very carefully. Pause and read this slide twice over. This slide itself is a key to multiple MCQs. Another key topic is how to manage acute exacerbations of gout whilst the patient is on allopurinol. The key is not to stop allopurinol, start NSAIDs and then increase the dose of allopurinol once the patient is stable. Also rule out issues around compliance and high alcohol intake that reduces the efficacy of allopurinol. Next is septic and reactive arthritis. RCP loves to confuse candidates with these two topics, so the concepts around the clinical context, the organisms and the management options should be crystal clear before you appear for your exam. Next is spondyloarthropathy. Now it is a fact that overall the standards of the question are getting tougher year by year and that is why I keep saying that you have to have a very strong knowledge base in order to fare well in your MRCP exam. Let's look at a question that is very similar to what I got when I sat for my exam. Pause the video, read the question very carefully and then let's discuss the explanation. The stem gives you back pain along with morning stiffness that improves during the day. 
this points towards inflammatory spondyloarthropathy. The HLA-B27 is negative, although in some cases of angst spond, you can get an HLA-B27 that is negative, but the age is unlikely to be right for angst spond. Now you look at the x-ray. This is a classic candle wax dripping x-ray that is found in DISH, diffuse idiopathic hyperostosis. The age, the medical history of diabetes and the BMI supports the diagnosis of DISH. So do not mistake this for angst spond. The answer is diffuse idiopathic hyperostosis. The next important topic is vasculitis. Expect questions on granulomatous polyangitis, EGPA and microscopic polyangitis. In your exam, question stems will always give you a lot of confounding features. For example, sinusitis, epistaxis, eye symptoms can all be found in both vaginas and microscopic polyangitis. But look out for these differentiating features in your question that will point towards the correct diagnosis. If you get a pattern of asthma, eosinophilia and sensory neuropathy, you are probably looking at a churk strauss syndrome. But please don't be fooled with wheeze. Wheeze can occur in many other conditions. If you get wheeze in your question stem, do not automatically assume that the patient has asthma. Then you will get the diagnosis wrong. Each of these points can feature as an MCQ in your MRCP exam. Next up is polyarthritis nodosa. Every point is important. Hep B, mesenteric ischemia, fibrinoid necrosis. Like I said, room is easy if you know the right technique to study. And if you can quickly identify these key points in your clinical question stem, you will save a lot of time in answering these questions and can ensure that you answer these questions correctly. The next important topics are temporal arthritis and cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. Let's look at an MRCP style question and see how we can answer this. Again, read the question carefully before listening to the explanation. This question talks about an elderly lady who has come in with shortness of breath and worsening stiffness with ongoing headache. On examination, she has weakness of her limbs. The chest examination is normal. There is no temporal artery tenderness. The blood investigation and chest x-ray initial investigations are normal. So the question asks you, what is the next best step? In your MRCP exam, these questions can completely catch you out unless you understand what exactly is the question trying to test. Any thought along the lines of temporal arteritis or polymyalgia rheumatica is wrong because as a thumb rule, you do not get weakness of the limbs in polymyalgia rheumatica. You have to focus on the fact given in the question that the patient is a smoker and she is having increasing shortness of breath. This is actually a question of polymyositis and you have to do a CT chest abdo pelvis to rule out any pulmonary malignancy. If you are liking this video, please give me a thumbs up in order to let me know that you have found this video useful. Also, in the comment section below, please let me know what other topics you would want me to make videos on. Okay, let's focus on lupus now. Now, I always like to read SLE, DLE, Jogren and systemic sclerosis together because they have a lot of overlap. System-wise manifestation, antibodies positivity pattern and management. You have to know this word by word by heart. I want you to focus on drug-induced lupus and specifically on the differences between drug-induced lupus and SLE. So, if you get a question that says there is a Caucasian male on sulfasalazine who went to the beach and returned with a photosensitive malar rash, this is a drug-induced lupus because it is Caucasian. So, SLE is more common in blacks. Male, again, SLE is more common in females. And they are specifically telling you that the patient is on sulfasalazine which is a known cause of drug-induced lupus. Now, how would you treat them? The option you're looking for is low-dose steroids. All right, now let's focus on some miscellaneous topics. Periarticular diseases, 
commonly adhesive capsulitis, supraspinatus tendinitis, medial and lateral epicondylitis and carpal tunnel syndrome. Pattern recognition in questions on shoulder pain. Both active and passive movements pain is adhesive capsulitis. Pain only on active movement is supraspinatus tendinitis and pain associated with weakness of arm is brachial neuritis. Bone pain, fracture, deafness, high output cardiac failure along with the normal calcium phosphate but raised ALP automatically should trigger you to think about Paget's disease. Okay? The treatment is bisphosphonates. Do not enter the examination hall without reading Paget's disease. That's it for today guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Also do not forget to join my Facebook page uh, named ACE or MRCP where you can directly send me a message if you have any query and I can directly interact with you. Thank you. All the best. Stay safe. Keep studying and ACE your MRCP.